Hey YouTube, welcome back to Science with Sully. Today I want to discuss these really cool proteins that exist in uh, all eukaryotic cells. And if you're in a college level cell biology class, especially, um, you'll go over them. And um, so it, this is a video to maybe help your understanding of them a little bit more. Uh, these proteins I wanted to talk about today are called chaperones. And these are really cool proteins. They're also called HSP70s. And HSP stands for heat shock proteins. And basically heat shock proteins um, are exist in mammalian cells and <clears throat> do protect, they, they're they called heat shock proteins. Their function doesn't necessarily mean that they protect from heat. They named them heat shock proteins because they do denature at a higher temperature than uh, most other proteins. So HSP70s, I prefer chaperones and here's why. If you think back to a middle school dance, there were chaperones at the dance. And what were the chaperones there to do? Chaperones were there to keep things apart, or in the dance case, people or kids apart, to keep things apart um, that uh, shouldn't be together. So with that in mind, let's try to lock that definition into our memory because it, um, it really makes understanding the pathway and the function of the proteins um, a lot easier. So, and think back to your middle school dance and we can note that, uh, note the dance, if you're trying to copy along with me. Um, the, literally like chaperones at a middle school dance. So, let's get into the mechanism of, uh, before we get into the mechanism of <clears throat> heat shock proteins, um, we should also note that um, they are uh, ATP aces, which means they use ATP. Hydrolysis um, to free energy to carry out their function. And we'll see that. Um, but we call these proteins ATP aces, and that's any protein that uses ATP hydrolysis uh, as its source of energy to carry out its function. So let's jump into the mechanism. Well, chaperones are involved in um, protein folding. So as the, uh, as our ribosome, which I'll draw green, and here's our large subunit, and this will be our small subunit, um, as our protein, which we'll have in blue, starts to emerge amino acid, amino acid at a time, um, the protein, of course, wants to start folding because proteins, when they come out of ribosomes, um, proteins, uh, the common knowledge is structure equals function. So if the protein starts folding prematurely, when if say this part of the protein needs to fold with into a part of the protein that has not yet been translated out of the ribosome, then you're gonna have a misfolded protein and that's disastrous, especially keeping in mind um, that uh, structure equals function. So if the structure isn't right, the function's not right, the function's not right, it's bad news. So the protein's coming out of the ribosome and we want to keep it apart. We don't want it to start folding right away. That's where our chaperones come in. They're keeping things separated that shouldn't be together. So these are going to be our chaperone proteins. And what are they doing? They're holding the protein um, basically taut or um, tight and letting the ribosome continue to travel this way down the messenger RNA to keep transcribing protein. So 
these HSP-70s or chaperones are holding this apart. Well, <clears throat> what, how do they do this? Well, they're ATP aces. So ATP, they are using ATP hydrolysis and using the energy from ATP hydrolysis to carry out this function because they're always energy has to be used or it has to be given off. It's given off here through ATP hydrolysis and it's used by the chaperones that are um, keeping the protein uh, from folding. So this is where things get kind of cool. So we're gonna take it to a next step. Let's see. We'll take it to our next step. And the protein is completely translated, right? And it's wanting to start folding. And ATP hydrolysis has just taken place on our HSP-70s. So they're doing their function. But what's really cool is when the ATP on this guy goes to an ADP plus a phosphate, what happens is that being now on him instead of the ATP, so instead of this right here, he's got this. Well, that's gonna change his shape, that protein shape and his function. And that's gonna make them relax and basically come off of the protein so the hydrolysis of ATP actually makes them get off of the protein. And then the protein, since it's energetically favorable for proteins to fold, the protein's gonna fold, you know, into its conformation. And then it will go and carry out its function. So it's pretty cool. You've got these chaperones that are basically just impeding it from folding right here while it's still being translated from the ribosome. So there's no premature folding because as I noted, structure equals function. So if it doesn't fold right, the function's not gonna be right or it won't function at all. So heat shock protein 70s are really, really, really important. And actually, um, uh, if uh, there is a embryonic, uh, there's a embryonic lethality um, if there is an altering of the gene that transcribes the mRNA and translates for the protein of a uh, heat shock protein 70 or the chaperones. So they are extremely important to. Um, life and function of the cell. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight on uh, heat shock protein 70, or as I like to call them, chaperones. And um, be sure you, uh, if you like the video, be sure to give it a like, maybe give me a follow. And if you like the channel, subscribe for more content that'll be continuously coming out. And come back to Science with Sully.